firsthand experiences, like we read about in the Old Testament, don't happen like they did many, many years ago. People don't wrestle with God like Jacob did. And they don't see the Lord in a burning bush like Moses did. None of us have ever seen anybody, I don't think, taken up in a fiery chariot. Like who? Who was taken up in a fiery chariot? Elijah. You know, but even though God doesn't speak to us in those open ways, we know, don't we? We know that God is calling. The question is, are we turned on? Walked into that symphony last night. The last thing they said to me before the symphony started, take it out, turn it off, put it back in your pocket. Do we do that sometimes with God? I'll listen when I'm ready, but I'm not ready right now. You know, and God calls us in so many ways. He calls us in the events, the happenings in our lives. Things happen. Unexpected things happen. Events that bring joy and triumph. And there are events that bring sadness and defeat. And the message is not always obvious. And sometimes we're confused about what God might be saying to us. So since the picture since our call, since the message may not always be crystal clear at the very beginning, oh my, do we need to listen carefully as well as observe. And if we're listening carefully, we're talking carefully, so that says we need to be praying. Now, most of us are real adept. We're really good at expressing our feelings to God. We can give our praise to God. He's the source of our strength and He's our sustenance in life. We can give our thanks to God for the abundance that we have and the many blessings that have come our way. We can call out to God for our own needs. Needs that we hold. Material needs. And needs that are in our heart. We can do that. We can express our sorrow for what's happened. And we can beg God for things that we want to have. And sometimes we're like Job. Sometimes do we ever get just a little bit angry with God? It's okay. God understands. He understood it with Job. You know, we just are human and we do things like that. But no matter how beautifully we express our thoughts or how humbly we say things to God, and how often we give thanksgiving to God, we must, we must be listening for the Lord's response with an even greater effort. Prayer, prayer is our daily conversation with God. We can never ever know what God's will is for us unless we openly and frequently listen to God. Old saying, old saying. You know it as well as I do. We have two ears and one mouth. We're supposed to listen twice as much as we seek. And that kind of wisdom expresses exactly what our prayers should be. That way we can know God's call by being open, by speaking, and by listening to God. And once we hear and think we know what God is asking, then we have to move forward. We can't just sit around and wait for something to happen. Perhaps we have to move forward and respond. We have to move from where we find ourselves presently in order to answer that call that God gives to us, and that takes courage. How many of you all like to move out of your comfort zone? How many of you really wanted to jump out of your nice warm bed this morning? Very few of us did. You know, I get settled in and it's tough to move me. When we get comfortable, we don't want to move. 
And feeling comfortable is pleasant. And if it's so pleasant, why should we change the things that are going well? But when we get too comfortable, if we're not careful, that comfort can lead to complacency. And that draws us into our sins. When we get complacent, when we get too comfortable, it becomes all about me and keeping my feet warm and keeping the soup going. And I forget and we forget about others. 700 years. Think about this. Here's the Old Testament talking straight to us again. 700 years before the birth of Christ, God spoke through Amos. And Amos warned the religious leaders of Israel, the northern kingdom, against this comfort. Hear Amos' words. He's pretty forthright. He doesn't beat around the bush. Alas for those who live lie on beds of ivory and lounge on their couches, who eat lambs from the flock, the flock and calves from the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp, and like David, improvise on instruments of music, who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Israel. Amos pretty much hit it on the head, didn't he? And I don't think it's just about something that happened 2,700 years ago. Folks, we can be like Bruckner and Einstein and St. Augustine, and we must be willing to move from our comfortable experience and move forward, venture forward, be daring with faith, out into the unknown. You know, there's a certain sense of fear that's inherent in the unknown or in uncertainty. And I don't think there's one of us in here this morning that wants to generate any fear because fear and uncertainty comes to <coughs> nature to our lives. Every day brings a certain amount of anxiety, a certain amount of fear, a certain amount of uncertainty. And we don't know what's going on. And we don't want to create any more than we have to, or none if we can. But Jesus put it in the gospel like this. He said, do not fear. Only believe, and you will be saved. So if we are to respond in a positive manner to the calling of God, we must be in conversation. We must be in dialogue with Him. And we must be open to His call. No matter how uncomfortable it may seem to us, we've got to be listening. We've got to trust. And we've got to have faith. So I ask, how is the Lord calling you, me, us, today? How is God speaking to us, and then, once we figure that out, there's another question. Are we listening? Brother, Einstein, St. Augustine, each received a very special opportunity and an invitation from God. And those opportunities came in diverse ways and were received later in life. But once they were received, once they were accepted, they changed, they transformed their lives and allowed these men to make very, very special contributions to society and to the world that they lived in then and to the world we find ourselves today. They're like Samuel in our scripture this morning. They heard the call of God and they responded. And they were able to say, literally and figuratively, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And then they acted upon the Lord's words. May we have the faith and may we have the courage to do the same. And can we look to God, knowing that He's there for us, and say, 
whatever, instead of looking to God and saying, whatever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.